I've picked um, three books uh, of our pr uh, spring program just to give you a, a very short uh, impression of uh, our publishing house. Like my studies, I'm not very well prepared here, so I try to speak uh, freely. Um, Klet Kotta is actually um, a construct. Um, there's no people uh, called Klet Kotta. It's uh, two parts. The Kotta part is um, one of the oldest publishing houses uh, in Germany. Uh, it's about 350 years old. Kotta was one of the biggest uh, publishers in, in all time in, in Germany, publisher of Goethe, Schiller, all the um, uh, great German classics. Um, the um, Klett family was one of the first to uh, get a permission after the Second World War um, to publish again. Uh, they started with um, school books, textbooks, uh, but also with psychiatry, psychology, psychoanalytics, and was always uh, supporting um, writers uh, and artists. Um, so there had been a general program even before Klett Cotta was founded. Um, the Klett Group is at the moment and for quite a while the biggest German book group, actually. It's maybe a surprise to some. Uh, and it's a, a well-hidden secret. Um, uh, there is, uh, because uh, most of the, there's about 80 um, publishing houses that belong to the group, and only uh, Klett Cotta and two others are actually happening in bookshops. Uh, the rest is direct marketing with um, schools, teachers, uh, and um, pupils. And um, when uh, Michael Klett, who's still the head of the whole um, group, um, took over the publishing house from his father at the beginning of the 70s, after he had, for example, found Tolkien, uh, which is still one of our biggest uh, authors uh, in Germany, um, Ernst Jünger. Uh, I'm not sure if he's uh, known uh, as well here in Belgium, uh, one of the authors of Klett-Cotta, recommended to him, why don't you buy the name Cotta and make it Klett-Cotta? So it was a uh, publishing house, very from the beginning, um, driven by authors, driven by the connection um, with um, famous authors. And um, in the 70s and 80s, uh, Claire Cotta uh, published um, a lot of Nobel Prize winners, uh, great authors, um, until it became a little bit calmer. Um, um, it was because uh, when the birth race, I don't know how to say that, came down, the group suffered uh, a little bit, of course, as a school book group. And um, the parallel story is uh, the story of uh, my business partner, Tom Krauser, and me. We found it uh, in uh, 1969, Tropen, um, a young, urban, edgy publishing house, uh, and were uh, nearly eight years ago asked um, to merge uh, with Klett Cotta. So it's still the name Klett Cotta, but we have now also as an imprint the possibility at Tropen to publish younger, um, uh, also experimental uh, stuff. Um, this is just in a uh, very short uh, my story and uh, the story of um, Klett Cotta. Um, we have a literature program at uh, Klett Cotta where we um, publish general fiction, non-fiction, um, and uh, Risiko by Stefan Kupetsky is a title that I would uh, say is quite a typical Klekota title. Uh, it's a broad, epic, um, you could say historic novel, um, but not in the sense uh, that it is used as a genre um, uh, um, term in, in our business. It's a not very well known part uh, uh, story of the German history of First World War. It's uh, actually, it's if you hear it, you can't believe that it's true. Um, at the beginning of the uh, First World War, uh, the German emperor um, started an expedition to Kabul. Yes, you heard right, to Afghanistan. 1914, he sent 60 people to persuade the emir of Kabul to rise up against the English and to win the war for the Germans in the so-called English heartland. Um, it's a wild story. We have a tradition in Germany of adventure tales, um, but it's also a very um, actual book um, because um, if you read it, you're uh, amazed how the topics of 100 years ago are so similar to ours. 
actually uh, the expedition was called the German Jihad. Um, and um, you have to, uh, it's all historic. So the book is contrafact, um, but just the beginning and the end are invented. The rest is the actual story. And uh, what surprised uh, me is that topics like solar energy, um, debt crisis, even Moody's was founded at that time in, um, is in Constantinople. Um, they were rating the Turkish government. So it's, it's kind of a mirror of our time, this book. Um, and that's what we loved about it. Um, but it's also a wonderful, epic, entertaining book that stands quite well for this part of our program. Um, as I said, also the tropen part is going on. It's a younger imprint. Um, we Usually we don't want to make a division. It's not high and low um, literature. So it's, it's just for another target group and it helps to, to find the right readers um, for the books. And this is a, for us, um, we've had heartbreaking book um, called in the English title is the mobile library. It's a story, it's a so-called feel-good tragedy. Uh, it's a story about a um, little boy who has a really, really horrible um, childhood and then uh, decides um, to flee, to escape uh, from this childhood uh, with the local um, um, book bus. Uh, and he encounters a lot of... Um, uh, strange people, uh, so it's it's not it's, it's actually an edgy book, although it has a commercial appeal to it, and that's what we what we like in our program to do um, to surprise, but also um, to bring books to readers, also to new readerships, young readerships. You could, um, if uh, the one or the other of you knows Wes Anderson films, you could compare it uh, to the aesthetic, also formally, of a uh, um, Wes Anderson. Um, book. Um, but as I said before, at Klet Kotta we have kind of a, a full program, also a non-fiction program. We do um, society history and we're actually um, the biggest um, psychology um, publisher in Germany. This is a book um, I especially um, like. We were very successful with uh, capitalism critique. Uh, this is actually a book I found on a publisher's trip in Australia. So uh, these things work. And uh, it has a um, timely connection to um, uh, Antwerp because it um, uh, describes how in the 16th century through the introduction of Arabic numbers, um, uh, the invention of double bookkeeping in Venice kind of changed our whole society. Um, it is so surprising um, to learn that only by double bookkeeping that most of us probably consider as a very, very boring thing, uh, our modern ways of capitalism only became possible. Uh, in Germany, I think, until the end of 17th century, uh, Arabic numbers uh, were supposed to be evil because you could prove everything with it. And I think, in a way, it's true uh, till this day. And um, so the whole um, project also of the variety of the uh, publishing house uh, still follows um, kind of a motto that Michael Klett, uh, the publishing house, once gave. And uh, this is a, um, to form a new anthropology. Um, a very humanistic uh, idea of it. Where Although we belong to this uh, big group, um, can work very independently and um, to not um, stick uh, in our past that has its uh, beauty. Uh, we're also trying to match the digital age and this year we will um, launch a platform with all other uh, psychology uh, publishers in Germany, uh, especially for psychology books uh, to compete uh, with Amazon uh, because we feel uh, that something has to be at least on a, on a business side. It's all business and it's all fair deal but uh, we have to, the feeling we have to put something against it and to prove uh, that this is not um, the only way to do things. Thank you very much.